Okay, so you guys know we love a good deep dive, mm -hmm. and we've gotten a ton of requests to dig into Taylor Swift's Eras Tour, but like not just the concert itself, mm -hmm. but like how she's really kind of crafting this whole experience for fans. Yeah, right. And with the recent announcement of the official Eras Tour book and a companion album called, get this, The Tortured Poets Department. The anthology. Mm. I knew this was right up our alley, so let's get into it. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating how she's really capitalizing on this record-breaking tour, by the way, yeah. which is projected to be like the highest grossing tour like ever. Oh, yeah. To offer fans something even more exclusive and really build that connection, that bond with her audience. Yeah. Which is a trend, by the way, this whole like immersive experience going beyond just the music. Totally. We see this more and more in the industry. Like 100 percent. Like Beyonce's Club Renaissance events, mm. like those weren't just concerts. They were like full on immersive experiences tied into the album. Mm -hmm. right? so, so going back to Taylor, mm. um, we know this tour book is packed. We're talking over 500 photos. Wow. And some of them, they have to be those never before seen shots of the stage costumes. Oh, for sure. The sure. set designs, all those visuals that make this tour like so iconic, right? Yeah. Plus she promised personal reflections. Yes. Which, like, has everyone buzzing, obviously. Grab. Everyone's, like, freaking out. Yeah, those reflections are key because uh. it makes you wonder, like, what is she going to share about this point in her career? Like, thinking back on all those eras, yeah. like, from country darling to, like, pop icon, it's kind of a statement to release something like this now. Absolutely. It's like she's inviting us all into her world, like, more than ever before. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we've got the book. We've got the behind-the-scenes stuff, okay. right? But then there's this whole other layer. The Tortured Poets Department. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I mean... Is this unreleased songs? Is it poems? Right. Is this a diary? That's like, what is it? The suspense is killing me. The name itself is so intriguing because it really makes you wonder, like, what was the thought process there? Right. You know, is it a play on, like, the idea of songwriting being a form of emotional processing, right? Mm. Maybe we're going to see a more vulnerable side to how she makes her music, you know? Yeah. And the fact that it's coming out not only on CD, but vinyl. Oh, smart. Genius. That's so smart. Brilliant move. Vinyl is having such a moment right now. Huge. Like, especially with younger fans who, I think, just love that, like, nostalgic, tangible experience I, right exactly yeah. this is like smart because she's ensuring that this release resonates across like generations of fans exactly yeah because it's like you have that physical album that book it's something you can hold you can display it you can like cherish these things yeah they become more than just music more than just words on a page it's like they become these artifacts like yes. souvenirs of this specific moment in her career and i think that's really cool it's true and it is something that, like, her fans all get to share, like, this experience. Exactly. Yeah. So we've talked about the what. Like, yeah. The tour book, the album. But, like, what does this all mean? Right. Let's get into the why. Like, why is Taylor doing this now? Yeah. At this point in her career? Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not a coincidence that she's doing this now. Right. Like, think about it. Yeah. She's been, what, like a global superstar since she was a teenager. Right, absolutely. Yeah, we're talking, like, someone who has navigated the highs and lows of fame so publicly mm -hmm. for, what, like, almost two decades now? Right, exactly. Yeah. And, like, through it all, she's had this incredibly personal relationship with her fans. Oh, yeah. So these releases, especially with those personal reflections she promised in the book. Yeah. It feels like a very deliberate choice to invite fans in, like even further than before, mm -hmm. to offer a glimpse into how she's like processed it all, you yeah. know? Totally. Especially, I think, now as she's revisiting all these different eras of her career with this tour. Right. It makes you think about how her songwriting has like evolved, mm -hmm. how her relationship with her fans has grown and changed yeah. you know, over time. Oh, for sure. And I mean, this is someone who's always been incredibly strategic about her career. Right. Like, remember when she pulled all her music from Spotify? Oh, yeah. Or re-recorded, like, her entire back catalog? Huge, huge power move. Right. Those were statements, like, yeah. about artistic control and ownership. 100%. And, like, you know, those moves, they resonated with a lot of artists who felt like they were being taken advantage of by the industry. You know what I mean? Right. Totally. But this new strategy, it feels different, right? It does. It's less about like fighting for control. Yeah. And more about choosing like how and when to share that control. Mm -hmm. To just like 
deepen the connection with her fans. Exactly. It's like she's yeah. saying, I've told my story through my music, but now let me tell it in my own words. Yes. Through my own lens. It's so true. And the timing, like genius. Yeah. Riding the wave of this like massively successful tour. Of course. It's almost like a victory lap, you know? Yeah. A celebration of her career so far, mm -hmm. but also maybe a hint at what's to come. Okay, so we've talked about the book, the reflections, the strategy, mm -hmm. but the tortured poets department. Right. It still feels like the biggest mystery. I know. What do you make of that title? Well, is there anything in Taylor's past that could be a clue? Well, remember, like back in 2019, yeah. when she mentioned having a vault of unreleased songs. Oh yeah. Like fans have been speculating about that ever since. Oh, I bet. The tortured poets department could totally be some of those songs. Okay, yeah. Maybe early versions, demos, you know. Yeah. Something that gives us a window into her creative process. Imagine like hearing the original all too well before it became this like 10 minute masterpiece. Right. Or like getting a glimpse at the songs that didn't quite make the cut for like 1989 or Reputation. Right. It'd be so fascinating to see how her songwriting has evolved to hear those echoes of the earlier tracks in her later work. It'd be like a musical archaeology project. Totally. Like digging <laughs> through the layers of her career. Exactly. Yeah, I love and the fact that it's being released alongside the tour book. Yeah. It's like they're meant to be experienced together, you know? Totally. Two sides of the same coin. A hundred percent. It's like she's inviting us to explore the world of the Eras tour from like every angle, you know? Yes. The visual spectacle, the behind the scenes stories, and like yeah. the raw, vulnerable emotions that fueled it all. It's amazing. That's really cool. It's a level of fan engagement that I don't think we've ever really seen before. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Like, it's next level. It is. And you know what I find so fascinating about it? What's that? It doesn't feel like at all like a cash grab. Right. You know, yeah. it feels like a genuine gift to her fans, I think. Totally. Like there's a sincerity to it that you can't really fake. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally. She's inviting us into like her creative process, her vulnerabilities in a way that I feel like a lot of artists wouldn't even like dream of doing. No, totally. And it makes you wonder, like, is this the future of how artists connect with their audiences. It makes you wonder. Like we're kind of moving away from just like the days of just releasing an album and then going on tour, right? Totally. Like fans want more these days. They want access. Yeah. They want those experiences. Yeah, they want to feel like they're a part of it. You know? Exactly. Yeah, part of the journey. 100%. And Taylor's like right at the forefront of that. Oh, absolutely. And she's always been so savvy about using new platforms, new technologies to connect with her fans. Right. Like, since the beginning. Yeah, like, social media, streaming services. All of it. She's been there. But this feels different, you know? It, it does. It feels more intentional, more curated. Yeah. More about creating, like, a lasting legacy, I think. Totally. And speaking of legacy, I keep thinking about the title, The Tortured Poets Department. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, she's acknowledging the sacrifices that come with making art in the first place. Yeah, you know? yeah. The emotional labor, the vulnerability, that's just, like on display for the world to see. Totally, yeah, and by sharing that, right. by letting us like peek behind the curtain, yeah. she's creating a sense of like intimacy and understanding that I think goes like way beyond the music itself, you know? Yeah, 100%. It's like she's saying like, this is what it costs right. to create this art that you love. Yeah, it's such a powerful message, not even just like for aspiring artists out there, right? but for anyone who's ever poured their heart and soul into something they care about. Totally. It's like a reminder that the creative process, it can be messy. For sure. It can be challenging, but it can be like incredibly rewarding at the end of it all, right? Absolutely. So what does this all mean for you, our listener? We've unpacked a lot today, the strategy, the artistry. It's a lot. The emotional core of these new releases from Taylor Swift. But what are you most curious about? What are your theories about the Tortured Poets Department? Let us know. Because we are dying to hear your take on all of this. Mm. And like always, thanks for listening.